Hello and welcome back to Particular Pixels. I'm Shaoling and this is Tokyo 42. Tokyo 42 is a stylish isometric open world shooter brought to us by Smack Games. The first thing that caught my eye about the game when it first announced was the colorful and interesting art style and the design of the game. It looked pretty interesting, reminded me a lot more it reminded me of a more colorful version of Syndicate actually. The game starts with you waking up in your apartment only to find out that you've been framed for a murder you did not commit, which sets you on a journey to find out exactly what happened. You're taken through a brief tutorial which explains some of the shooting mechanics, the stealth mechanics and how you go about navigating through the world. And it's not long before you're assassinating targets, taking out gangs and just generally causing chaos in the open world provided to you. You move around with the WASD keys, jump with space, right click draws your weapon, left click shoots your weapon and very importantly you can rotate the camera around with Q and E. You can purchase a number of different weapons from various vendors around the map, grenades, rifles, pistols, bazookas, hand grenades, lasers and a number of other weapons as well which will allow you to play the game in a way that best suits your playstyle. There are teleport points scattered throughout the world as well that once unlocked will allow you to quick travel around the map. The map is pretty large I might add so you'll be pretty thankful that you can travel around quickly because going around on foot will take a little while. There are also all kinds of collectibles in the world, suits, points of interest, skins for your weapons and skins for your cat. Yes I said cat and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Outside of that there are a number of terminals that offer missions for you to do that you can get credit rewards for. There are side missions in the game and there are story missions in the game as well. I have around 7 hours in the game. I finished the story mission, a number of the side missions as well as a few of the terminal missions in the game. Each terminal offers a set number of missions that can be replayed if you want to earn some additional cash. An issue though that I had with the terminal system is that once you've finished a particular mission or all the missions at a particular terminal, the UI doesn't do a very good job of letting you know that that terminal has been completed. So once you've discovered several terminals across your map, there's no easy way to tell which are the ones you've done without actually going up to the specific terminal, clicking on it. And that is definitely somewhat inconvenient. I think it would have been nice if the icon color changed or there was some kind of indication that that was done. It is a little bit frustrating to have to go around and you know double check everything to see oh did I do these? I can't remember if I did these. The side missions themselves range from infiltration missions to assassination missions. There are even some parkour missions available in the game where you are tasked with collecting a certain number of capsules within a certain amount of time along a specific course. There is also a racing mini game in the game. Now I found the parkour side missions to be quite annoying. To be quite honest, you aren't given a great deal of time to finish the course and on top of that because of the issues with the camera angles it can be difficult to see where these capsules you need to collect are, especially the ones that are hovering up in the air, forcing you to continually rotate your camera around so you can navigate around the map. If you don't perfectly collect all the points on the course you are almost guaranteed to fail and have to restart and you will have to do that over and over and over. And to me it just wasn't very enjoyable. The racing game was okay but the parkour side missions but like the, the racing game was okay but like the parkour side missions it also suffered due to the camera obstruction. Uh, the racing game was okay but like the parkour side missions it also suffered due to camera angles being weird and buildings obstructing your view. So you're also forced to continue to rotate the track around to see where you're actually going properly. I ended up playing the racing with my gamepad because playing with the mouse and keyboard was a little bit of a nightmare if I have to be entirely honest. The AI goes pretty fast and you have to know the track pretty well so again this is another thing that requires trying over and over and over before you can actually win the race. To me though these two side activities I suppose were the weakest part of my experience with Tokyo 42 and I absolutely have no interest in ever playing them again. I think that the game is at its best when you are doing the infiltration missions and you are engaging in combat. Thankfully you don't need to do side missions in order to progress in the game. The combat itself is actually very enjoyable. You can approach missions in stealth or you can go in guns blazing depending on what you want to do. Sometimes the missions will start out in stealth and things go south as you would expect in some cases which force you to draw your guns and go loud. You can crouch behind cover you to avoid projectiles, shooting will automatically bring you out of cover. When you stop shooting your guy will duck, duck back down behind cover. 
The one thing that I did miss in the game was the ability to dodge roll out of the way. I think it would have made the combat more fluid in the sections where you were moving around and shooting. There are also a variety of different types of enemies in the game. Some throw grenades, some had katanas, some had rifles, others had sniper rifles. Most of the enemy strongholds in the game and the missions will throw a mix of these enemies at you to keep you on your feet. So when you're hiding behind cover, they'll be throwing grenades at you, forcing you to move to different spots of cover. Going in silent is obviously the safest way to do a mission, but that isn't always possible. Um, and even the stealth sections in the game were quite enjoyable to an extent, learning the patterns of the guards and then just sort of sneaking around low walls and things like that with your katana in order to take them out. There are also police in the game, although honestly in my seven hours of play I didn't really see many of them honestly. Um, unless you really go out of your way to kill a bunch of civilians, you aren't going to see any police at all basically. If you just play through the side missions and the terminal missions and the story missions, you very likely won't see the police at all. You are going to need to start making some trouble in the open world with just your average civilians before they show up. Every now and again, you'll also get a rival assassin who's going to show up and try to kill you. You don't know who he is, so he could be anyone in the crowd. And all of a sudden, someone in the crowd will have a weapon and they'll start shooting at you or they'll have a katana and they'll start running towards you and try to kill you. If you do manage to kill the guy, you will get a credit reward as well. Late in the game from some side missions you get a cat which you can then deploy which will sniff out some of the assassins so that's pretty cool. Although I didn't use the cat that much because again in the story missions and some of the actual infiltration side missions there's really no point in using the cat it really is only good at least from my experience in dealing with these so-called rival assassins that appear all of a sudden. There are 25 story missions in the game, all of which have three achievements, so you can complete the mission without getting detected or killing everybody or killing everyone and not getting detected. However, I don't see a way of replaying these missions, which is a little bit odd, so there's no way you can get all the achievements if you've done it one way and you didn't do it the other way. But perhaps that's just something I'm missing and I haven't seen it. There are 67 side quests in the game, there are 7 strongholds in the game, which are basically restricted areas filled with enemies, kind of like outposts in Far Cry, but once you've cleared them out in this game, they stay cleared. The main story was kind of interesting, I don't want to talk about the story since there's possible spoiler territory, but it was enjoyable enough for me to play through the story and there even are some boss encounters along the way. The game isn't that difficult, but there are some missions that can be quite challenging, which will require you to retry them several times. Thankfully, there are checkpoints scattered throughout the map, so if you die in mid-mission and you're playing at stealth, you can just go back and restart from a certain section. However, if uh, you're going guns blazing and the enemies are shooting at you, you will be unable to use any of these checkpoints. You do get a fair amount of cash from doing the terminal missions and the side missions in the game so you won't really find yourself at a place where you are unable to buy the equipment or the ammo that you need. There are a lot of collectibles in the game. Now I like collecting collectibles just like the next guy in most games but I found that in Tokyo 42 it just wasn't very interesting for me finding the collectible coins that give you currency because you already have so much it's really not worth the effort because they give you so little. I had zero interest in finding the points of interest. Uh, some of you guys might like collecting the coats and the weapon skins and the cat skins, but for me, nah, it just wasn't that interesting. You have the ability to change outfits. You have a battery, so every time you change outfits, your battery goes down so that you look like another person. I never really used this much because, again, on the terminal missions and on the side missions and the story missions, there really is no point because most of them take place in restricted areas. And no matter what you look like or what disguise you're using, if you're in a restricted area and the enemy sees you, you will get attacked. However, if the police are after you, as I said earlier, you won't encounter them unless you go out of your way to kill people this becomes more useful because then you can have them lose your scent by changing your outfit. To me this seems like a bit of a missed opportunity. I think they could have incorporated this mechanic more into some of the main missions in the story and side missions that you do do. Performance wise there weren't any issues at all and I never came across any game breaking issues. 
but there is one thing that I do need to talk about and that's the camera angles and the buildings obstructing your view. I touched on this earlier when I was talking about the parkour side missions and the racing but this can cause problems in combat in some of the missions as well especially if there are large buildings around you or you are fighting in a really tight area rotating the view just doesn't help you can't see what you need to do you can't see the enemies you can't see the bullets you can't even see where your cover is and you can barely see where you are this is a serious issue at those moments considering that this game is kind of like a shmup you know you are avoiding projectiles you need to see where they are so that you can avoid them uh, this doesn't happen all the time thankfully but when it does it can make some encounters incredibly frustrating making the game harder and more frustrating than it really needs to be uh, perhaps they should have incorporated a transparent view where large buildings are behind you and you can't see what you're doing much like Diablo 3 or a number of other games have that have used this kind of technique the controls work fine for the most part. I played with mouse and keyboard. As I said, I played the racing with the gamepad too. They're both responsive and aiming works like it should. Though personally, I think that the aiming is much easier with the mouse and keyboard. Uh, and it is what I would recommend to play the game with. There is supposed to be multiplayer as well, but it's not something that I was able to test since there were no servers. Overall though, I did enjoy my time with Tokyo 42. It's a nice concept. The art is great. The soundtrack is great as well. The gunplay for the most part felt good and the story was, for the most part, interesting. As I said before, the parkour side missions and the driving were probably the least interesting parts of the game. The occasional issues with the gameplay being obstructed by the buildings, although annoying, were not enough really to ruin the experience. Do I think that Tokyo 42 is worth $20? Well, I suppose that's going to depend on who you are. If you're just going to play through the story, then you probably should wait for a sale. If you are the type of player who likes what you see here, but you plan to explore the entirety of the open world and find all the collectibles, then I'd say, yeah, the game is probably worth the asking price. It's not a bad game at all, but we're going to have to see how the multiplayer mode plays out and how much replayability that is going to add to the game. But anyway guys, that has been a look at Tokyo 42. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and some of you found it helpful. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the section below. Again, if you want to keep up with content that I release, don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like since it does help out a lot. And if you didn't enjoy the video, there's the dislike button as well. Thanks for watching guys. I've been Charling. Until next time.